Just now solved the problem on delta E required for cruise for climb. We'll also talk a little bit of about the maneuvering point. You know why now? What is maneuvering point? Which we generally denote by NM right, bar. Again, it is expressed in terms of chord, this much percentage of chord, or it is that is why bar is there to non dimensional as the actual distance, dividing it by mean dynamic chord. So, what was maneuvering point? If you see, we have already explained that Nm is N naught, let me write this expression minus 1.1 g rho Lt by tau C m delta E by W by S. Right. So, what is N naught here? N naught is stick fixed neutral point and what is N m? N m is stick fixed stick fixed maneuvering point. Okay. And now, if you see what is the relationship little closer if this is a reference, if this is the n naught bar, the maneuvering point n m will be this side or this side. From this expression, let us check first. See here, this sign is negative, C m delta is negative. So, negative into negative positive. So, n m bar is greater than n naught bar. So, if it is n naught, n m will be somewhere here, okay. which by conceptually we also are very clear as an airplane maneuvers, there is the additional angle at the tail which gives the pitch down moment. So, it increases apparent stability of the airplane, longitudinal stability of the airplane. So, naturally, its neutral point or maneuvering point should be behind the neutral point stick fixed because now it is a more stable during maneuver, right. Meaning, thereby, if you draw the CG here it will become statically unstable, but if you are doing a pull up, you put the CG here, right, CG here, CG here. The moment you put CG here, uh, you find D delta E, you have seen that it is D delta E by D n equal to 0. So, when the X CG is at N m bar, the D delta E by D n, that is elevator per G, this gradient becomes 0. So, that is the definition we knew, I just revised that. And if you want to solve such a problem, before solving a problem, you see what are the relations and what are the parameters that create this difference numerically. You could see here, this is the term, and this term is a positive term. This term is positive. And what are the parameters we have? See, G, of course relation to gravity, rho is decided by what altitude I am going to fly. So, now you see, if I go on flying higher and higher and higher, if I go on flying higher and higher, if everything remains same theoretically, what is the effect of rho? This rho will go on decreasing. So, the effect, the numerical value of this will go on reducing. So, theoretically there will be a point where N m and N o will remain, will be very, very close. They cannot be distinguished, theoretically speaking, because rho is reducing as I go higher and higher. And that is true also, if conceptually, all these terms, whatever you are seeing here, when I say it is going for a Q, and there is a change in angle of attack here, they are almost like a damping effect. Okay? And damping definitely, rho is going down, so damping effect also will reduce. So, as I grow higher and higher, this two try to come closer, this N m try to come closer to N naught bar. Right? This is one understanding. Second understanding is, you do not require any other additional information to find N m bar. 
if n naught bar is given, if n naught bar is given. So, we are discussing that how to find n m the maneuvering point if n naught is given. And you will see in such numericals or in practical field also you will find n naught could be given two ways. One is directly, another is you know if you, are, if you know static margin, so it is static margin let us say it is something like this, this is C m versus C l graph is there, let us say this value is 0.6 and this value is let us say this is slope is minus 0.1 and this x c g is 0 0.3, correct. What is given? Given is C m versus C l variation, let us say this point is C l 0.6, the slope is minus 0 0.1 and this corresponds to a particular C g location which is 0 0.3, x g bar is 0 0.3. Now, if you see this diagram, you also can estimate what is n o, we are trying to find out what is the stick free neutral point by analyzing the data given in this C m versus C l graph. Very simple, you know, DCM by DCL equal to minus static margin, and that is equal to minus of NO minus XCG, or this is XCG bar minus NO bar. Now, DCM by DCL is how much from this graph? It is minus 0.1. What is x c g? x c g is 0.3. So, if I solve this, I get n o bar equal to 0 0.4. So, two ways you will find mostly the problems are displayed like this. Okay. You should very carefully know this. With this information, you can easily find out what is the n o or neutral point, a stick fixed. So, once I know n o, so this is known, NO bar, you know, is known. What information I require to find NM? CM delta I, which will be available because it is an elevator control power. Tau, tau depends upon AC by ST, we also know it may be around 0 0.4, 0.5. LT is the distance between AC of the wing and CG of the tail, that also will be given. How it will be given? You see many airplane, they will be given VH, this is a 0 0.6. And V H is nothing but you know S T L T by S wing C bar, S tail will be known, S W will be known, C bar will be known, and if V H is given, you can find L T. It's a physical number, right? Nothing. So you have nothing to do actually. All the things are available. Once you know N, put the numbers here, you will get N M bar. I am explaining this problem just to familiarize you that the problems are given in different fashion, the data is presented different way, you need to extract the relevant information as long as you understand what do you need. So, that is the skills of solving the problem, but before I end, please see here, this gentleman W by S is also here. So, before I end this part of lecture, let us have a closer look on W by S and you could see if W by S increases, then this term goes on decreasing because this is in the denominator. So, as W by S goes on increasing, the dis difference between N m and N naught bar or N m bar and N naught bar also shrinks. Right? What is the meaning of W by S increasing means? It is S is going down for a given W. Right. Then, then only W by S increases, right? smaller area, larger weight, typically high speed airplane. So, you will find high speed airplane will have larger W by S compared to a glider and hence you will find as I go on increasing the W by S, the difference between N M and N O will shrink. As we are seeing, as I go higher and higher altitude, the difference also shrinks. So, these are the two very important parameters you should be very much aware at design stage. 
that it, the difference between NM and NO reduces as I go higher and higher and as I make W by S wing loading higher and higher. Okay. This is a designer need to understand this. So, I thought I will mention this here at this point. Thank you very much. Dear friends, we are going for a sortie now. I have um, Captain Amit Dhaiya with me, he is the pilot in command and we will try to show you few aspects of stability and control while flying. I will request students to focus here and I will ask Captain Dhaiya, what is this? This is in my knowledge it, it is PFD, Captain Dhaiya cannot tell me what exactly sir, is this? That is primary functional display, Let's give you some basic, six, uh, basic instruments in there in flying sir, that okay. is called manifold pressure, RPM, air speed, artificial horizon with attitude indicator, DGI, then altimeter, then gives you VSI, that is your six basic. The VSI is basically vertical speed, vertical speed indicator. Yeah. What do I see the air speed? Is there, so, it is indicate after you can. Yeah. Increase. Okay. So, let us focus here on this screen. What we will do, we will go for a cruise mode and during the cruise, you know that it will have a fixed altitude his air speed will be also constant and the bank will be zero. First we will check that and that will be our equilibrium point about which we will introduce disturbances to check whether this airplane is statically stable or not. Now the question is how do I introduce disturbance? You could see this is the control column. So if I pull this column towards me then the elevator will go up and if I release it elevator again will go to neutral. So this is elevator going up and then it is coming to neutral or if I push it, it will go in the opposite direction. So, we will give elevator disturbance by pulling the stick and see what is happening, whether it is going to come back to its neutral position or not or equilibrium position or not. You can understand it once I pull this elevator and by doing this, the elevator is going up. That means to maintain that sort of a CL, it needs to give a higher angle of attack because speed has decreased, so elevator goes up and that gives you a nose up moment. And with this background, we will be seeing how elevator disturbance will create problem for the airplane, whether it is statically stable or not. In class, I have talked about disturbance in terms of angle of attack, but now we will be giving that disturbance through elevator. The elevator will give a angle of attack and will withdraw that. We will see how the airplane is behaving, whether it is coming back to its equilibrium or not. Once we want to increase the speed, so, we have a throttle setting here. So, this throttle we can increase the speed, we can give a speed disturbance also, we increase the speed and release it. Then again, we see whether it comes back to original speed or not. So, that will talk about speed stability. So, like that, we will be uh, discussing uh, while we will be doing the flight, right. Let us go for a flight now. Captain Dhaya will initiate the flying process. So, so then we can start our aircraft. Then, first of all, you can bat battery on. Arm check down, test for 10 seconds, then arm on, then it's called red mixture, mixture in, half inch throttle, then friction neck tie, then give you fuel pump for 3 seconds, 1, 2, 3, then you can check fuel flow. Yeah, then you could see here fuel flow yeah, make sure flowing is there. Pump out, mixture out, then you can check your ignition buttons, first of all right. Right magnet or left magnet or both, then start. Prop area clear? Yes, sir. You could, you could see here, you could see here the RPM. The RPM is increasing and uh, coming down to around 14 to 1500. You can reduce the throttle, sir. If you reduce the throttle, the RPM will further go down. Then alternator on, avionics yeah. on, it can on.
रेट फुट है See here now, Captain is taxing. RPM is around 1110, and you could see there is a fuel flow. Green indicator is there. We are operating somewhere here. The oil pressure, oil temperature, cylinder head temperature, everything is being displayed here, which are very important for captain to have this information for flying. We are now entering into our runway. This is IIT Kanpur runway. Its length is around 885 meters. And you can see we are turning from this indicator. Pilot knows how much he has turned. The speed here, can you make out? Sir, the speed is alive after 20 25 knots. Okay. After 25 knots. So I was asking Captain why speed is not being shown here, and you understand any speed lower than the stall is not of concern for flying. So unless we cross the stall speed or come around that, this display will not get activated. And I will show you at what point you will start getting the speed. And this is air relative speed. You could see here there is an analog altimeter reading, so almost showing zero. These are all standby instruments. You could see here altimeter. Here the air speed, this is the attitude indicator, right? Going for takeoff.
pilot says it is cruising now. We will see the air speed is almost constant, around 95 knots. Altitude is around 1000 feet. So, and wings level. So, wings level, speed is around 96 knots, and altitude around 1000 feet. So, we are actually cruising like this, and that is what is our equilibrium point. Now cruising at a higher 1160 1, altitude. Speed will be reducing. Now the speed is has gone down. So the angle of attack will increase. You see the angle of attack is increased. Yeah. Attitude, attitude indicates 1000 feet. That is your attitude. Uh, the attitude. Attitude is around around 5. How much is this? No, this is maintain your attitude. Okay. So with, with respect to RPM. We can reduce with respect to power, we can okay. reduce your speed. Landing for landing. You could see pilot is 
looking for his coordinates. He's looking where is the airship. So he'll be now keeping the airplane to approach. altitude, it has now come to 500 feet okay. and speed is also reducing, the speed reduces, it has just increased the angle of attack, so he is having the stick in his hand and try to pull the stick and also giving a bank correction because a lot of disturbance comes. Gradually we are reducing altitude now, it has come to 240 feet and the speed is around 75 knots. We could see the airstrip, we are aligning along the center line of the airstrip. Now speed will further go down and as you can see the RPM is also go down. The speed has come down to around 75, that is near the stall speed and we are touching down. You see the pilot is pulling because as he pulls it, the speed goes down and drag will increase as the ailerons are also going, uh, elevators are also going up.